Good morning, friends. Anne here, and happy Easter. I am so glad that you have joined us for worship today. You are in for a great celebration. We're going to be worshiping. We're going to be praying. We're going to be reading the Bible and digging into what Easter really means. Can you believe that it is finally here? We have been, since the beginning of this year, reading through the book of Luke, and we have been talking about Jesus' life and his ministry and his message. And today, we finally culminate with this beautiful message of the resurrection of Jesus. And so thank you for joining us, and I hope that you will join us as we start this time off with worship today. Everything's changed It's getting harder to recognize The person I was Before I encountered Christ I don't walk like I used to I don't talk like I used to I've been washed from the inside I've been washed from the inside out Hallelujah the blood and could have only been the blood Your grace, your mercy poured out for us. I will love you forever, honor 
the sun in heaven I've been washed from the inside I've been washed from the inside Hallelujah Hallelujah I know it was the blood Very early on Sunday morning, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The women were terrified and bowed with their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He has risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be betrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. So they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna Mary, the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. So friends, do you believe it? Can you believe it? Can you believe that Easter is finally here? And my question to you is, can you believe that Jesus actually rose from the dead? Can you believe that Jesus died for your sins, for my sins? That he took the punishment that you deserved and I deserved? Sometimes it's hard for me to believe it. What are some other things that are hard for you to believe? Um, is there anything else that you have a hard time believing? You can drop your you can drop your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Sometimes I have a hard time believing these things that I cannot see, right? Sometimes because I haven't experienced it, then I have a hard time believing them to be true. But belief isn't about seeing something. Belief is about choosing to accept something as true. Here in the United States, we have this phrase that says, seeing is believing, as if, if we're able to see it, if we're able to see the resurrection, if we're able to see Jesus, then we will believe Jesus. But I think the thing that we need to realize is that believing is seeing. That once we choose to believe and once we choose to accept, then we can begin to see Jesus working. So let's dig in to our scripture today, which is Luke chapter 24, which you just heard this beautiful story told to you by two of my good friends, Kevin and Julie. And they were able to read that passage to us. But there were a couple of verses that really stood out to me and that I would like to pull out in this, con in this time that we're going to talk about this concept of can you believe it? Because I think that that was the question that people were asking whenever they were experiencing this and seeing this or not seeing this for the first time. So let's pull out several of those verses. We're going to start with chapter 24, verse 4. And just as a reminder, this is what the verse says. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. 
So here they are. These women were coming in order to bury dead Jesus in order to rub spices on his body and continue this burial, this burial process. And they did not expect to see angels, to see men that were dressed in these dazzling robes. They were expecting to see a dead body. Friends, here's the thing that I think we need to know about expectations is that so often we actually don't expect that God is going to do what he says he's going to do. These women didn't expect that Jesus was going to do what he said he was going to do. He kept telling them over and over again while he was with them that he would die and then be risen three days later, that he would rise again. And he had told them over and over, but what he said just seemed too crazy to be true. But here they were, coming to the tomb, expecting to see the body of their dead friend. And what instead they find are these angels that have a message for them. This message that says, hey, who are you looking for? Why are you looking for someone who is risen among the dead? He is not dead just as he told you. Friends, the first thing that I want to encourage us today is to expect him. To expect him to do the things that he said he was going to do. To expect that God is truthful and faithful and that he will accomplish what he has set out to do. We don't need to discount him because we think that what he is going to do seems impossible to us. We need to expect that he is going to work in the way that he said he's going to work that he is going to do the things that he said he is going to do. God is always truthful. He is always faithful to complete his purposes. And so friends, these women did not expect him to do what he said he was going to do. But at this side of the grave, at this side of the resurrection, we know that we can expect God to do what he said he was going to do. The second verse that I want to point out is the one that is in chapter 24, verse 11, and it says this, but the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. So if you remember in the story that we just heard, the women came to the tomb and they were met by these angels. And the angels said, hey, he is not here. He has risen just like he said. You should have expected this. And then the women go back and tell the men. And it says they rushed back from the tomb to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to them. And I think that is so, so significant that they did not believe what they did not understand. And friends, so many of us today fail to believe because we think we have to understand before we believe. Believing doesn't come from understanding. Understanding comes from believing. Like I said earlier, believing is a choice. It's something that we choose to do, and it's not something that we choose because we understand. After we choose to believe and accept what God has said is true, then he begins to reveal his truth to us. He begins to reveal himself to us in ways that he didn't before. We choose to believe, and then we begin this journey of understanding. Friends, too many of us are waiting to believe Jesus until we understand Jesus. We're waiting to believe in God because, because we don't understand God. And I want to encourage you today that God is bigger. He is mightier. He is stronger than you or I will ever believe than we could ever imagine if you are waiting to believe in God when you understand God, that will never happen. God is our creator. He is so much greater than we are. 
And we are never going to get to the point where we fully understand so that we can believe. We need to believe so that we can begin to understand. And then right after that verse, we need to be reminded that we should believe him, that he is trustworthy and true, that he is going to do what he says that he should do, and that we can believe him even when we don't understand it. Right after that verse comes this one. <clears throat> However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. Friend, I think the thing that we need to do next, once we expect that God is going to be true to his word, that he's going to do what he says he's doing, and once we begin to believe in him, this is what happens even with just a tiny bit of belief. Peter went to the tomb and he was wondering. He was wondering what had happened. He was trying to work it out in his heart and his mind. But this wondering didn't prevent him from believing it. This wondering was as a result of his belief. Once you begin to believe, it's not like all your doubts and your curiosities go away. It's not that everything is then revealed to you and you don't have to wonder or be curious anymore. Just like Peter, that little seed of belief can lead us to a place where we wonder, God, what are you doing? And then we begin to watch for him. We begin to watch for him to move with this little tiny seed of belief. God can do something in your heart and in my heart, even in the midst of our doubt, even in the midst of our confusion, even in the midst of being puzzled and wondering what could this mean. There was a seed of belief in Peter that enabled him to watch for God to watch for Jesus, to see what would happen next. And friends, I encourage you to take that tiny seed of belief that may be sprouting in your heart and in your mind and to let God do something with that and then watch for him to work. Watch for him to reveal himself to you in your life. Watch for him to work in new ways that you couldn't have asked for or imagined. Friends, on this Easter Sunday, my prayer for you is that first, that you would expect him to work. That you would expect him to be truthful to his word. That you would expect that Jesus is longing for you to have a relationship with him. And then that you would believe that you would believe that he died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins, that all of the things that you have done in the past can be covered with the grace that he is offering you, that can those things can be forgiven. There is no sin in you that is greater in the grace that he has for you and the forgiveness that is available to you. Friend, expect that he will do what he says he's going to do and believe that he has already done it, that he has made a way for you to be in a right relationship with the Father through his own death and resurrection. And then third, friends, watch. Watch for him to work. Watch for him to take that tiny seed of belief that you have and to begin to move in your heart and mind and grow it that he will be able to work in you even just with the tiniest amount of belief and that God is going to work in you and through you and around you, not only to grow you, but to grow other people as they encounter Christ in you. Friends, that is my prayer for you on this Easter Sunday. That if you have not yet believed, that you would choose to believe. And in your choice to believe, that God would begin to work in you 
so you would begin to see him and more fully understand the love that he has for you. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, open our eyes so that we can see you. Even with the tiniest bit of belief that we have within us, Father, grow us to come to understand you more, to believe in you more fully and deeply, even in areas where we are puzzled and confused, even at times in our lives where we think that it is beyond our comprehension to understand. God, help us to choose to believe. Grow our faith. Grow our belief so that we can live fully into the forgiveness and the freedom that you have offered us through the death and the resurrection of your son, Jesus. God, we praise you. We praise you for who you are. We praise you for the fact that you loved us so much that you sacrificed your one and only son. God, we will never understand the depth of your love for us. But help us today choose to walk in that love. Choose to believe in you. And as we believe, help us to live more fully in that freedom of your love. In your name I pray, amen.
friends, thank you so much for joining us for worship today. And I want to end with this question. Can you believe it? Can you believe this love that Jesus showed us on the cross? Can you believe that God did what he said he was going to do? That he sent a savior to die for our sins so that we could be in a right relationship with him. Friends, I want you to make sure that you are expecting him to move in your life, that you're believing in him, and that you are watching for him to move. And if you have made that decision, I want to end with another question. Who is your one? Who is the one person that God has put on your heart and your mind to reach with this good news of the gospel that Jesus came and died for your sin and mine so that we could be free? Friend, who is that one that you are meant to tell? We have this challenge this year that each of us is to reach one other person or maybe two or three or four or 10 or 20, however many people God has called you to reach with this good news because we need to ask other people, can you believe it and help them on their journey of belief as they begin to see him and know him and understand him more? So friends, thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Thank you so much for sharing this message with those who God has put in your life. And don't forget that each and every week we have a reading guide that will enable you to continue to dig into to God's scripture and continue to, to develop that seed of belief as it sprouts and it grows and you continue to understand him more fully this week. And friends, I will see you back next week for more worship as we praise and worship the one who set us free. Have a beautiful Easter Sunday.